If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, February 6, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. We'll be doing previews of several college conference championships in the coming days on the show, and today we're continuing our look at the Atlantic Coast Conference. Yesterday, we talked about several things to watch at the women's meet, and today it's the men's turn. And joining me in the Finise Monitor to break it all down is Swimming World contributor David Reeder via Skype from Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. David, how's it going? Going all right, Jeff. Good to talk to you again. Good to talk to you. So uh, yesterday, you picked Virginia as the as the uh, champion of the women's ACC championship. You said it was going to be a close match. Um, do you see Virginia taking the men's meet as well? You know, I think it's going to be close. I think that's something we saw um, a couple of weeks ago when North Carolina beat Virginia on the men's side. Same situation, last two events. And I'm not so sure about this because Virginia has won this meet six years in a row, but I'm going to go with North Carolina to take the meet. Uh, again, I think it'll be close. I think they'll be in the mix. I think Virginia will be in the mix. And I think Virginia Tech and NC State will all be there. But I'm going to go UNC 1, Virginia 2, and Virginia Tech 3. And that's another tight one because NC State's got some really tough sprinters um, with the likes of uh, Simonis Billis and Jonathan Baffa. And they won the 400 free relay last year. And they would have won the 800 free relay if not for a um, – disqualification for jumping in the water before the the last uh, in the heat had finished. So they'll be tough, but and I think and I think all four teams will be pretty close, but certainly I, I do think uh, North Carolina is going to get the win. Yeah, I kind of th think so too, but I, I think Virginia Tech's going to get second. They're, they've been having a fantastic dual meet season, and I know conference meets aren't always a great indicator of how um, or dual meets aren't a great indicator of how people are going to perform at conference, but Virginia Tech has been doing so well. Um, in the College Coaches Association of America's poll, they're the top-ranked AC team, ACC team. They've been top-ranked all season, and they just I think they just really have been on a mission this season. They, they swam against Texas and swam really well, and um, I just, you know, I can't say that, you know, it's a surprise because they keep getting better year after year after year, but they just seem to really take a quantum leap forward, and Yep, North Carolina kind of has a little more depth, but I think when Virginia Tech is as hungry this dual meet season, they're they're going to continue that to conference, and it's going to be it's it's going to be weird to say Virginia's third after all these years, but I I think that's the way it's going to turn out. Yeah, and, and, and I agree with you. That's definitely what could happen. Um, and I really don't know how I could argue with that. Uh, one thing, I mean, Virginia is great especially in you know the longer events when they've got a guy like brad phillips and john daniek in the 500 and the mile obviously for daniek but um virginia tech really strong in those sprints and the relays is where you get all the points on the comp especially at the conference level and also the national level and um again that team always uh a force in the relays they've got a guy like joe bonk who's um from around here in raleigh and i've seen him beast it up for several years and they've got a bunch of guys in you know in the uh low 20 high 19 range and then in season even the 44 range in the 100 and and that they're a team that can that to watch it or to watch and j just like with nc state it's going to be about those sprinters to see how much how many points they can get there and to, to make up for what um what some of the virginia guys might bring in the um in the distance fence or in some of the stroke events. Yeah, I think the, the reason I'm putting Virginia Tech second is, as you said, those relays are very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got, I don't really say the 800 free relay is a sprint relay. It's not really a distance relay, but you take the 200 relays and the 400 relays, that's four relays that I think they're just better than Virginia. And that's that, that can right. make the big difference. So, you know, it, I think it's going to come down to just a few fractions of a point. And as you mentioned on yesterday's yes. show, that they're going to be placing to the top 24. So, I think all all these teams are going to be thanking their that this decision because it's you know they might need those 17th to 24th places. Yeah, for sure, and uh, you know all these teams are very deep, but I think 
I think when you go that deep is really when you get into Virginia and North Carolina's strength, um, because these teams have are, uh, these teams are well built, and I think that that extra heat might actually help those teams. But um, it's really just going to depend on the event, and I don't think we'll know for sure until we get to go through it and take a look at the at uh, the scoring. Right. Well, when it comes to singling out people at the men's and ACC championships, mm-hmm. you have to start with Nick McCrory there where you are at Duke. I mean, the guy won all three diving events last season, um, won the platform at NCAAs, um, just tons of accolades, including Olympic bronze medal. Um, yep. I'm sure everyone at Duke continues to be happy that he didn't take uh, David Badia's route and go pro because... This guy's really putting the continues to put Duke diving on the map, and it's it's just a, I think it's amazing as I'm sure you guys are that you, um, you know the coach left and he stayed. Yeah, um, yeah. He Nick's been great. He's had a he's had a really awesome year. He uh, at this past weekend's meet against UNC, he had pool records. You know his top scores ever in the um both both plat or uh, springboard events, I should say. And um, he's you know he's been here a while. He's been here five years and been this is his fourth year uh, of college and he's arguably doing his best diving ever easy favorite to go into ACC's and cruise through those diving events again though that actually the diving events will be held a week early with the women's meet um but Nick certainly a favorite in those and I think he'll go into NCAA's certainly the favorite in the 10 meter has the NCAA record and um you know always a chance that he could sweep all three but um yeah it's it's been a been a, it's always been fun to watch him to watch him dive. I think he had some experience with um with our new diving coach uh, Nunzio Esposito, and um, it's been a very successful senior year for uh, Nick McCrory. Yeah, and usually like you know you get a first year a, a new coach in your program. There's always a little you know transition period, but it seems like it's just clicking for Nick, and that's that's great to see. And it it bodes well yep. for 2016 as well, I think. Yep. Yeah, I mean definitely will be interesting to see uh to see what. Decisions Nick makes after this college season. Yeah, absolutely. He may he may go to Indiana, but I know you guys in Durham are hoping he sticks around. Yep. <laughs> um, let's let's talk about Florida State because they got a couple guys who can win some conference championships. Uh, mm-hmm. Paul Murray won the hundred last year. He was second mm-hmm. in the fifty to the now graduated Mark Weber. So it, it looks like he's going to sweep the the sprint freestyles. Who do you think could challenge him? Yeah, Paul Murray, um, very strong. Um, very strong sprinter. I'm pretty, if I remember correctly, he had the top time in the 50 of the meet last year. Uh, he might have had a goggle malfunction in finals, and uh, uh, it's been a while, obviously. But um, he certainly he's the favorite. You got the guys from NC State, always, um, always, a, always uh, a real presence in those events. Joe Bonk from Virginia Tech and a couple other of those guys. But um, uh, it's a, the sprints are fairly wide open, but I, I think Murray's probably the favorite. And then if we're talking Florida State, I think we got to look at uh, Pavel Sankovic. He had three wins last year, uh, two IM in both backstrokes, and he'd never really swum yards before. So he's one to watch out for as well. Yeah, I think last year was an adjustment period for him, and I mm-hmm. really I think it will be a big boost for Florida State if they can, they can show that they're not just a sprint freestyle school, if they can not just get him to win again right. in all three events, but also to you know, score big at the NCAA championships to show, hey, we can do more in the sprint freestyle. Yeah, for sure. That's going to be their um, – I think Senkovic is obvi- he's obviously a, a big part of that and it'll be big on their medley relays as well. When I talked to the guys from Florida State last year after they won the they won the 200 free relay and they were like, you know, this event is really our bread and butter. And I think even though on paper not as strong without a guy like Mark Weber, I think they'll be, um, they'll be pumped especially to, to try and repeat that, uh, that win this year. Well, it's it's going to be a great meet, and you know you look all the way d- across the board, and it's great to see that there's so many schools that are are making this a very diverse meet. You got people that are going to win from every school. It seems like I think every school is going to probably contribute a title in some ways, and that's always good to see because sometimes you get a you get teams that are like the Pac-12, and it's you know Cal, Stanford, right. USC, and then everyone else is just kind of just hanging around just fighting for for minor minor places so it's good to see that there's a little more diversity and everybody kind of gets a a little bit of an opportunity to to have some glory at the ACC yeah I agree um I mean you, you look at the 200 free right now and the guy that's um first in the conference is Frank Dyer from Notre Dame 
not, you know, a traditional ACC powerhouse first year in the conference, but we'll, we'll see what sort of impact he can make, and that's always a fun event with UVA guys up there like uh, Parker Camp, who's had a great year. And then you look over at the, you know, the 100 breaststroke, and you have Taylor Gray from Virginia and Kurt Walreb from UNC and even a guy like Hunter Knight from right here in Duke. And that's going to be another one of the um, – one of the top, I think that really could be one of the top races to meet the, the hundred breaststroke. But yeah, like you said, really coming from coming from everywhere in the ACC, even though uh, even though like we've been talking about the depth really on the side of the, the, the top handful of teams, but everyone has some standouts, and um, that's what makes it so exciting. One more thing before we go about this this, this ACC meet, um, we had talked about the diversity, but you know it's just really interesting that you know. Augie Bush from Virginia is coming in and that we're still talking about that Virginia could win. And that's not something you usually talk about with a team that's dealing with not just a new head coach, but pretty much an entire new coaching staff. Yeah. I mean, what do you think they're doing there that's really helping them? I mean, yeah, they, they've got the same swimmers from the year before, but like I said, there's always this big transition period and sometimes swimmers slip up but and, you know, trying to deal with the new adjustments. But as we've seen with Courtney Bartholomew on the women's side, they're still doing great, and they're still doing some great stuff on the men's team. So I, I think this is a good sign for Virginia. A lot of people were, were kind of casting doubt on whether Augie could do it, but it looks like he's, he's um, going to really have a good presence this year. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I spoke with a couple of the Virginia guys a couple weeks back, they seemed – I think everyone was, was not expecting this big change. But I don't think anyone was upset to hear that Augie was hired. A lot of them might not have heard of him, but I think everyone's been impressed with um, w with his coaching. I think they've all really bought in, and I think that's why this team's still been so successful and has a shot at number seven in a row, even though they're by no means the favorites this time, like they have been the past couple of years. Definitely a shot at that seven straight, and they're buying in. And um, I don't think I don't think recruiting slowed down. And I think um, I think Coach Bush has the right has the right goals of getting this program, you know, back to to really prominence on the national level. Yeah, it's, I think that's something that um, Augie can take to the uh, Bush family gatherings and yeah. point at his dad and Frank said, you could never win a conference championship, but I could, Dad. <laughs> yeah, uh, he had... He had to deal with Stanford, though, winning thir winning for 30 straight years. Yeah, that, that's a tough wall to get through. <laughs> yeah. Well, David, thanks so much for joining us. And um, I know you're excited being um, at, a, at an ACC school for this meet. And um, we thank you for all your insight. Yeah, thanks. Th thanks for having me, Jeff. Always fun to do it. All right. We'll see you soon. Yep. See you, Jeff. All right. And our thanks to you as well for joining us for our preview of the ACC championships. Swimming World, of course, will be covering the meet on SwimmingWorld.com, so be sure to come to our website for the latest, as well as updates on Twitter. We'll be previewing more conference swimming and diving championships in the days ahead, so be sure to watch us here daily on the Morning Swim Show. I'm Jeff Cummings. We'll see you next time.